1045, the team, your home for New York sports. We're joined by Mike Rodak. He covers the Bills for uh, ESPN and ESPN.com. So, all right, let's get into the most complicated question ever in the history of anything. What's going to happen with Tyrod Taylor? Yeah, that is really the only question that matters around the Bills offseason because it's, it's going to shape uh, how this next season unfolds. So if you keep Tyrod Taylor, you're basically saying that you feel like you're close to, to going to the playoffs, uh, that you feel like um, he's able to be a capable starting quarterback in the NFL over the long term. So giving him $30 million if he's on the roster by March 12th, um, and you're, you're basically putting more pressure on, on Sean McDermott to win in year one uh, with the roster that, that is in place. So Sean McCoy and Sammy Watkins and Charles Clay and, you know, Cordy Glenn and Eric Wood and Richie Incognito and Darius and all those guys that you've paid over the last couple of years. Jerry Hughes, you're basically saying, okay, go out there and win um, because you're not going to have some of those guys over the long term. Um, you know, whether Sammy Watkins gets the next contract here, how, how much longer LaShawn McCoy has at a top level, uh, some of the older guys on defense as well, you have to wonder. But you're basically saying Tyrod Taylor is, is able to push the team over the hump. Now, the other option is to blow it up and say Tyrod Taylor has not been good enough these last couple of years. He's been decent, but not good enough. He's been an eight win quarterback, essentially. Um, and you're saying that we want to start to search for somebody else. Now, is that mutually exclusive? Can you keep Tyrod Taylor and still draft somebody 10th overall? Yeah, I guess so. But if you're going to draft somebody 10th overall, I don't think you want to be paying your backup quarterback uh, $30 million if that 10th overall pick becomes a starter in year two. So you kind of have to choose one or the other, and you kind of have to tear things apart and start with a younger quarterback and uh, give Sean McDermott more of a long-term focus um, this year would be painful for the Bills. It would probably be a four- or five-win season, uh, unless you can somehow finagle Tony Romo to come up to Buffalo. That would be the one situation where I think you might even upgrade a quarterback. Uh, but otherwise, you're looking at a downgrade in year one with the hopes of upgrading a quarterback in years two, three, and four. And that's the one thing we've been looking at, is that some of the assistants that were brought into Buffalo have some past experience with Tyron Taylor. Did that have any... I guess, influence in hiring these guys, or were these guys just the best coaches for the franchise? Yeah, I would doubt that it had a, a big impact. Um, I know people have read into that a lot, you know, that Rick Dennison coached one year with Tyrod in Baltimore, and he comes from the Kubiak system, and there's some familiarity there. I, I don't think that's a huge factor. I think Rick Dennison is one of the better OCs available on the market. <clears throat> I mean, Greg Olson came or was scheduled to come into Buffalo, so it's not like he was their guy from day one. It, uh, you know, they had their sights set on Brad Childress and then Greg Olson and uh, Mike McCoy was one of the names at the beginning uh, before he went back to Denver. So I don't think that was a huge factor. Um, now, will it be a factor in the coaching staff's evaluation of Tyrod Taylor, which they've been doing over the past couple of weeks? You know, possibly. I think Rick Dennison will have a, a, a positive idea of um, of Tyrod, but. I don't think it's going to be the deciding factor in this whole situation. Bills insider Mike Rodak with us right now, one zero four five of the team. So, Mike, when I was uh, when I was watching the Sanjay Lyle thing, where he leaves and he goes to the Colts, it instantly put a fear in my brain that Sammy Watkins is going to be the next guy out the door. Am, am I overanalyzing this? Uh, well, I mean, there's really no way he could. Um, he's still under contract for this year. They'll have to pick up the fifth year option by May, uh, which I think they will do. Uh, it would be expensive for 2018, but he's basically going to be here two more years, and, and barring something unforeseen. So uh, he doesn't really have much recourse. It's not like he's going to demand a trade. I mean, I don't think that's really going to work in the NFL um, to start pouting like that. Uh, I do wonder, just on a day-to-day basis, how much uh, his game will be affected by the loss of Sanjay Moore. I know he wasn't a big fan of Rob Moore, uh, the receivers coach back in, in 2014, and he's talked a lot about you know, Sanjay's attention to detail and a lot of the things he's done uh, for him over the last couple of years. And um, not that Sammy's not attentive to detail, but, you know, he's still a younger receiver and there's all sorts of distractions, you know, off the field and all that. So that would be my concern. I don't think it's a huge concern. Um, I've heard good things about Phil McGagan, who they brought in. Uh, I mean, granted, he came from East Carolina, which is 
uh, not exactly on the football map, but um, he does have some experience with the Dolphins, uh, working with their receivers. And from what I've heard, he's, he's also a pretty cerebral guy, uh, replacing Sanjay Law. What's the camp situation look like for the Bills, and who are the players are going to be targeting to make sure they bring back or even bring in this offseason? Well, it's going to be a lot of that's going to be dependent on Tyrod Taylor's contract. So if they cut him, um, you're clearing up some considerable space. Um, and it, obviously, the, the, the salary cap itself still needs to be set by the NFL. It's probably going to be in the $160 million range. Um, so the Bills are going to be anywhere from 25 to 30 mil uh, under the cap if they keep Tyrod to, let's say, 40, 45 million if they cut Tyrod. So, um, you know, you, you definitely have Roman to bring back Stephon Gilmore if you want to franchise tag him. If you feel like he's worth the, the 14 million that the franchise tag is going to call for, um, you have the room to do that either way. Uh, if you do keep Tyrod Taylor, though, and you do franchise Stephon Gilmore, then that's, that's going to be a lot of your cap space right there. Um, but, you know, as far as the other guys that they have as free agents, you know, they've expressed interest in bringing back Lorenzo Alexander. I don't quite get that one. Uh, as good of a season that he had last year, he, he's not the same fit in this defense as he was in Rex Ryan's defense in the 3-4. Uh, he's not a 4-3 player. Uh, he's a good special teamer. I mean, if you want to get him back at a cheap contract to play special teams, you can certainly do that if he's willing. Um, but I think he's going to be looking for a big deal somewhere else and where he can get playing time on defense. I just don't see that. The guy I, I think the Bills should try to resign is Zach Brown. Not that he's an all pro player. I think, you know, he might have been overrated a little bit last year because of his high tackle numbers, but he does have the best athleticism among the Bills linebackers as it stands. And uh, you do need that in Sean McDermott's defense. It's a defense where you want your linebackers to play coast to coast. It's funny, Mike, while we're while we're talking, my ESPN app goes off, and there it is. Uh, Mike Rodak says, Deshaun Watson or Tony, Tony Romo, headline top candidates to replace Tyrod Taylor. So so if, if they do, we'll know very soon whether or not they're going to move forward with Tyrod Taylor. And if they don't, you think it could be Deshaun Watson with that uh, with 10th pick? Yeah, it's, just, it's a matter of how they evaluate those guys. Um, if you're going to move off from Tyrod Taylor, then I think everybody will be expecting you to take a quarterback with that pick. It's a matter of who's on the board, whether Trubisky comes off uh, to the 49ers and number two is one of the scenarios that's been mocked out there. Um, whether Deshaun Watson goes to the 49ers, number two. Uh, what the Jets do um, is also a factor. So um, it depends on who's on the board. depends on if you think Deshaun Watson is worth the 10th overall pick, which some people don't. Some people don't see him as a first-round pick at all. Um, but, you know, if you're going to... If you're going to cut Tyrod Taylor, then you're going to be drafting a quarterback. I think that that's pretty well known. Uh, so it's a matter of whether you do it in the first round or if you try to trade down or trade up or do it in the second round. Maybe Deshaun Kaiser's in play at that point. Um, you know, you have your options, but you know Watson is certainly one of the bigger names on the board, um, and and Tony Romo is another one out there as far as potential trade targets or guys who could get released and, and signed from there. So, you know, those are, I'd say, the two biggest names out there for the Bills. Mike Rodak from ESPN. He is the Bills insider. We appreciate you, man. And uh, if you could go ahead and take this Buffalo weather back with you uh, when we get off the phone, <laughs> we'd, we'd thank you very much. No, I'll actually I'll, I'll resist on that one. I'm going to actually get on the driving range today, hit some balls. <laughs> nice day for it. So. It's evil, you know, Mike. It it's evil, Mike. Evil. <laughs> All right, man. We love you, brother. Thanks so much. See ya. Just enjoying the green grass.